wasn't originally going to shoot a video because I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend too much time out here in this crap. The, uh, <clears throat> the smoke being back. But we'll shoot a video of the stupid thing. I went to the trouble of pulling the address label, of course, so might as well shoot a video, right? Okay. <clears throat> Let's see how this was actually packaged. Again, this looks like another one of those cases where they took a large box and turned it into a smaller box. Okay, so this is going to be probably a massive pain. Oh yeah, you can tell, look at that. So, maybe you can tell, maybe I showed it, I don't know. You can see that it's definitely a a bigger box that has been made smaller. That's going to fall off. And all this non-recyclable packaging material. wonder what the uh, carbon tax apologists are going to say about that. Looks like, like a random assortment of packaging material, but I'm glad to see this much bubble wrap because normally people skimp on the bubble wrap. All right, let me get this thing out of here and we'll take a closer look at it. There it is. Look at the front of the machine. Another very early Packard Bell. This is a Packmate 1, otherwise known as a PB686. You can see it's in okay condition. It's not perfect or anything like that, but neither really is anything. <laughs> That's this age. That might be bad, but it might be fine. Switch seems to still be connected to something. Taking a look at the back. Looks like it's got another one of those small style power supplies. So I hope that works. I do have an extra, but. I don't know, they were fond of these, these style power supplies. They're not quite SFX, but they're not, uh, well, they wouldn't be SFX either. Like the AT version of SFX, and they're not baby AT either. Taking a look. This doesn't have dip switches external like the PB500. At least it doesn't look like it does. It's certainly got more expansion possibilities. There is merely one screw holding this entire cover in place. Let me pop that screw and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the inside. There are some concerning things. You can see all the corrosion there. There was a little bit of rust on the bottom of the case. I'm hoping this thing didn't have a battery explosion, but I would not be surprised if it did. Okay, taking a look at the inside here. Well, I don't see anything that stands out as being patently wrong with it at this particular juncture. Let's see if I can flip it right side up here. I do have the cable. There's the IDE ribbon. And I might, in fact, actually I do have a mounting place for the hard drive, so that's good. This is IDE. Here's the controller board. Right there. I assume that that's IDE anyway. I mean, it looks like it's IDE based on the cable that I have sitting right here, but sometimes you never can tell. I don't see a battery, and that was my one concern coming into this, that there was going to be a battery 
that was going to conspire to make my life difficult. Now, what might conspire to make my life difficult is... I don't think I can get... Well, I could get that riser board out, but I can't get the case apart. Because most of it is riveted in place. And I'm trying to see where a battery would even go on this. It's not like underneath anything or anything like that. It's got this weird 128k memory upgrade. So who knows how much RAM it actually has on it. Okay, with a light on, again, I'm not seeing where the battery would be. I'm also not seeing a CPU. I think it's worth noting that I'm not seeing a processor either. Unless it's that QFP down there, which doesn't look very good. Yeah, I'm not seeing where a battery would be installed on this machine. Interesting. Very interesting. I hope it's got a CPU. That thought just occurred to me. Because it looks like both U20 and U19 are unpopulated. Hmm. I don't know about that. I don't know about that at all. I'm starting to have a lot of questions about this. I feel like it might have been a waste of time. Floppy drive is unplugged for some reason, as is the front panel speaker. And who knows where that goes? So I got a little bit of research to do. And I hope this power supply is good because this is a different power supply than what I thought it was. So my PB500 spare power supply is not even going to work in this system. So that's cool, I guess. I don't know. I got a lot of questions, I guess, is what I'm getting at here. I have a lot of questions about this machine. I wonder if this is where a memory board would go right there at the back with that ISA expansion that I don't have. I'm assuming that this Pac-Mate 1 is a 286. But again, I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll look, do a little bit of looking up here and get some 411 on what this really is supposed to be. But I have a feeling that we've got a wide-ranging loss of parts here. Like we're missing the hard drive, obviously. Things are unplugged, and we might be missing the processor. Thank God we're not missing the BIOS. That would be a real problem. But yeah, I think we might be missing the processor. Unless it's that chip down there that's covered up by that, that thing. Which it could be. Alright, door's closed now because apparently everybody and their dog has decided they're going to come out and play. Okay, did a little bit of research. This is indeed a 286 board. And this is indeed the processor socket. So someone has beaten me to the processor. Jerk. So at least I have a board layout so I can figure out where... Like, the speaker is supposed to plug in. I'm assuming that's a speaker. I mean, it looks like a speaker. So it's probably a speaker connection. Well, maybe not. The speaker's right there. Where's the speaker even going? It's got a yellow cable on it, so that's not the speaker. So what on earth is that? The power LED? It's like the only thing I can think of. What a weird design. <laughs> this is a very strange design. But anyway, I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on that. But I need a processor because I can't do anything with this without a processor. Now I have this other battery bomb board right here that is never going to work again. There's way too much damage. Someone beat me to the processor on that too. So that's pointless. But actually, the fact that this has no processor on it kind of makes me wonder about that Craftsman machine. Is, is there a processor on the Craftsman board? I don't think there is, since this doesn't have a CPU on it. So I guess I'm finding two processors. What a pain. 
So I don't know what really to do with this at this point. Obviously, powering it up is just going to be a fruitless exercise. It's not really going to do much. I'm going to do a little bit more research, I think, on this board as far as the RAM is concerned, because this is intriguing. I don't know why it has this set up. Taking a, a closer look at this, this is a this is a weird, very, very weird configuration. So the way that it's configured right now is that there are two chips there soldered to the board. There's two chips there soldered to the board. And there's two chips on this other side soldered. Plus a bunch of empty sockets. And this board here, this 128K memory board. So what this is configured as, and the jumper would bear this out, is 512K on the board, on the motherboard, plus this 128K, what they call a piggyback board, to give you 640K. Now you could install one megabyte, but in order to install one megabyte, you gotta pull that piggyback board and install the rest of the chips on the actual board. But what's more than that, is that apparently 512K, so running just the board memory, not including that piggyback board, is not a valid configuration, which is very weird. Now, I, I suppose you could probably run it like that anyway, because supposedly you could put an upgrade in this and get up to 16 megabytes of memory. I mean, it's 286, so that would make sense. But I don't know how that works, since the system board itself really only recognizes 128, sorry, 1 megabyte, 1024K. I still haven't figured out what that wire is. Guess what, folks? I found it. Right there it is. The external bomb which is apparently plain kind of hard to get. I think I'm going to have to get a pair of pliers. Here we are. High energy lithium battery. That might have leaked. I don't know. It's hard to say. There's definitely a lot of corrosion. on this thing where the battery was. Like you can see it there. But I'm hoping, and it looks like that might actually be true here, that none of it hit the board because it was situated far enough away from the board that I don't think the board was harmed. But of course, all of it's largely academic because I have no processor, so I have no way to actually verify my audacity. So I'll have to get a processor for that. I'm doing a little bit of research. I'm looking for a 12 megahertz 286 in PLCC form factor. What's this? There's a piece of paper. Oh, that's nice. Hard drive screws. Those can stay in there. That's nice of them to leave me those. So the drive will go here. The hard drive will go right there. This thing doesn't support a, at least not directly anyway, a, a three and a half inch uh, floppy drive. So whatever the case may be, I have some work to do. I gotta find a processor for this. Yeah, and that's as far as I can take this video. So largely uninteresting, but I guess at least it's a start. Not really expecting that. I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to pattern it on. So in a way, that's a little annoying.